I tell my kids all the time, you got a great dad. The rest of your life's probably not going to be as great as the dad you inherited. You know, sometimes you, you know. Listen, there's a lot of people with bad dads. <laughs> That's you're, right. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Nick Wright is joining us. He's a good dad, joining us live. Boy, I'm just in a mood today. So, uh, uh, and Joy's right, though, Colin. Life's not fair. I showed up this morning to First Things First with my hair exactly how Joy's was, and they said, <laughs> you have to go home or fix it. I said, Joy Taylor gets to do this. It's not fair. This is it's not, not fair. It's They're not like, fair. Life isn't fair. Tell your kids. So, so years, okay, ag- good point. years ago, there was a Kevin Durant's better than LeBron uh, you know, vibe. You'd hear that chorus, and I remember thinking, yeah. time out, time out. It's more than just shooting basketballs. you you got to do a lot of stuff, both ends, be tough, be physical, be available, be a leader. And, you know, I said this to start the show is Kevin always ends up in the same place on an island. He's a really talented guy on an island. And at some point, can we just say this? He's quirky. He's a wanderer. He's not really a leader. He's just gifted. And once again, he's left with a team of toys of misfits in Brooklyn. Yeah, I well, listen, I like the trade for Brooklyn because they now have a defensive presence they didn't have. But obviously, it is not the big three that they thought they had. And now Kevin Durant's been a part of, arguably, the two most talented offensive big threes ever. The first one broke up because he left, and the second one never got off the ground, and, you know, so he has to wear some of that. Now, I think his biggest mistake in Brooklyn, Colin, was that he picked his original running mate as Kyrie. If I'm talking about why did Harden not work out in Brooklyn, a lot of the blame goes to Harden, a lot of the blame goes to Kyrie, I think some of the blame goes to Sean Marks for saying Kyrie's not playing and then, you know, waffling and flip-flopping. Now he is playing. I don't think that's out well with Harden. So there's a lot of names I would list before I would get to Durant on why this one didn't work. But here's what is true, and I think this will resonate with you. You know I'm big on NBA lists and the best players ever. If I were to talk about the 15 greatest players ever, there are three guys on that list that I think all of us say, even though they won, They won less than you would have thought they should have given their talent and domination. And those guys are Wilt Chamberlain, Shaquille O'Neal, and as of this moment, Kevin Durant. I I agree. That's fair. And, and, And what do those three guys have in common? They weren't great leaders. Shaq is awesome, an all time dominant player, but he was not a great leader. It's hard to lead when you're like, hey, I'll play my way into shape. I'll do the, you know, uh, those things. It's hard to lead that way. It's fair. Wilt obviously was not a leader and KD has never seemingly wanted to be a leader. So I think when you look at it and you say, you know, how does Akeem Olajuwon have as many rings as Wilt Chamberlain, as many rings as Kevin Durant? It's because in addition to all the great things he did, he was a rallying force the likes of which that more talented guys who have not won more than him were not able to be. I think that is probably the fairest knock on Durant. He's just never embraced that part of being the best player on a team. Now, I was talking to Daryl Morey uh, yesterday on my podcast. We brought you up a couple of times, and uh, we love your quirkiness. But we, I, he and I did agree on this. I said, listen, oh, I think it's much easier to bring a talented person into good chemistry and win. That's Philadelphia. The chemistry is good. Doc tends to be kind of like Joe Torre in baseball. It's a good locker room. You know, he can kind of balance some egos out. Uh, I just think Philadelphia's got, hey, can Harden come in and be engaged? They'll win a bunch of games. I think you got a lot of pieces in Brooklyn, and I don't know how they fit. But I would say this. I really honestly believe today, 10 games, Sixers, Embiid, Harden, I think they're going to look like a team that can challenge Milwaukee. Am I being too optimistic? Oh, I... No, I don't think you're being too optimistic. Listen, I think Milwaukee's the best team because they have the best player and he just happened to drop 50 last night. They have the championship medal. They have all of that. But the only team in the East that I think gives Milwaukee pause is Philly. Because if you look at what Philly can do, the five they can put on the court, you can have Maxi as an instant offense scoring guard. You can have James Harden as distributor, facilitator, scorer, depending on the role, assuming Harden is engaged and in shape, which I think magically he will be once again. You then have Tybal, 
to guard the other team's best player, a great defensive player. You then, at the, in your fourth spot, have Tobias Harris, who's overpaid, but if he is your third option on offense or your fourth option on offense, yeah. you can score 20 any given night. That's a good thing. And then, oh yeah, by the way, you have Joel Embiid, who up to this point of the season is probably the league MVP. And then if you want, you switch out Tobias or Tybal for Danny Green, depending on what you need. I think that's a legitimate five-man closing lineup yeah. that can cause real problems. Now, I obviously have real concerns about James Harden in the postseason. And Joel Embiid, there's the health concern. There's also the, he's never been to a conference finals, let alone an NBA finals. But if you, let me put it like this, Colin, I think we would agree. If you were to tell me the end of the story is Milwaukee didn't make the finals, the only team I'm sliding in there is Philly. Yeah. Not Chicago, they're not ready. Not Miami, they're not quite good enough. And I think Brooklyn is a wing short. So I think I think if it's not Milwaukee, I think it's Philly out. No, I do too. I think Joey and I talked about this uh, yesterday on the show. Is I, I would I don't know what the market is for OBJ. Uh, they have a lot of receivers, and I think I would probably move off him if I was the Rams. Uh, and it's funny, Nick Wright joins me again live, and we were we had him last segment. You had an interesting thought about OBJ. Lay it out for us. Yeah, I think he should strongly consider retiring. And you know how fond I am of Odell as a player and as a person. And it's, at some point, you reach you know, the, the threshold for lower body injuries at that position. He's already not as fast as he once was, not quite as explosive as he once was, and now he has another ACL injury to rehab Missy. Next time he plays a football game, he's going to be 30 years old, Colin. And so, yeah, I, I would love for him to have another act, but what I would not like is for it's like, oh, Odell plays for the Atlanta Falcons yeah. and had 34 catches for 420 yards. I think if the final images we have of him are these, that's pretty great. And you might say, well, what about the money? I would think, Colin, he could potentially make a, as much money in broadcasting as he could playing football because I don't think there's a big payday waiting for him on the other side of this because of the injury and the yeah. age. And, you know, I know how fond you are of Aqib Tlaib, our colleague. Yeah. I think Aqib has been a revelation in the booth. Yeah. I think Odell could bring some of that, some of the kind of raw realness, but also from the offensive player's perspective. Yeah. I said to Greg Jennings the other day, I think in a booth he could be kind of a combo of Aqib and Greg Jennings Two guys who I both think are excellent. So I just think he should think long and hard about yeah. it because he's accomplished everything he came here to accomplish. And so he wants to keep playing more power to him. But I don't think retirement's a terrible idea. Joy had a stat earlier. What was that stat about 16 losing Super Bowl quarterbacks, Joy? The last 16 starting quarterbacks who lost in their Super Bowl debut have never made it back to the, to the game. So Burrow lost. What do you make of the Bengals yeah. going forward, Nick? Yeah, I just, listen, I think this was their opportunity. Yeah. I don't think they were that good of a team this year. I know everyone's like, oh, they beat your Chiefs twice. They did. And credit to them. I give them all, this isn't bitterness. It's better for my Chiefs if the Bengals were some juggernaut. Like, ah, we lost them. But at the end of the year, Colin, they lost eight times, and they had five wins that came on field goals as time expired or in overtime. They are in a division where Every quarterback in that division got hurt except for theirs. Lamar missed the second half of the year. Baker was hurt all year. And Big Ben's injury was, you know, geriatric base where he technically <laughs> played, but he was hurt. So they, they had all of that, and they still barely won the division. I think they have, I say with respect, I guess this isn't that respectful, but I think they clearly have the worst coach in their division. And if you were to ask me what's more likely, that the Bengals, forget the Super Bowl, that the Bengals are in next year's AFC championship game, or that the Bengals next year miss the playoffs, I would easily say miss the playoffs. Yeah, I just think, yeah. I think the Bills are awesome. I think the Chiefs are obviously awesome. I think the Chargers will be better. The Ravens were 8-3 and three, despite having the worst injury luck imaginable. 
I just think the AFC is really hard, and I don't think what the Bengals did is sustainable. All right, so you do uh, Nick's tiers, your NFL tiers, entering yeah. the offseason. So this is officially the yep. way the league works. Now we got free agency coming up, and we have the draft, but the coaching yep. moves. So I tend to go, like every month, I say, okay, here's the free agency, here's the draft, here's the moves, then yep. here's the injuries. Here's the So this is going forward today. Give me your tiers. At, well, we can just show them. Yeah, this is, again, obviously it can change based on injuries, you know, trades, free agency, all of it. But I just want to kind of focus on the bottom two, Colin, because I think we probably, Colin, agree on those top four. Maybe we disagree on the order. I'm sure you know what, but I think you probably agree those are probably the four best teams in football. If Trey to Lance me, can play, if Trey a, Lance is, is a B to a B plus, yes, I agree with that. Yeah, because, listen, I, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a C-plus, and they got to a Super Bowl and they got to a conference championship game. But so, quarterback question and coaching question. I don't think Zach Taylor, Mike McCarthy, and Cliff Kingsbury are good coaches. I do like Staley, but let me tell you why he's a coaching question, Colin. I worry that the likes of you and your ilk are going to bully Brandon Staley <laughs> into being a boring, go-by-the-book coach. I think he's going to hear after hear Colin Coward every Monday say, take the points, take the points, yeah. even though the Super Bowl was won thanks to a fourth-and-one conversion yeah. on their own 30 with five minutes left. Nobody criticized that because it works. It's almost like people are playing the result. That's neither here nor there. So I have questions about those coaches. And then the next level, I like all those teams, the Colts, the Titans, I have real questions about their quarterback, sure. though. And I, are you going to bring back Ryan Tannehill? Are you going to bring back Carson Wentz? And my question, the reason I have the Ravens there is I do think we need to – it's not only is Lamar going to be healthy, but I thought when he was playing last year, Lamar's play was a little concerning. It's not that he was bad, no, but no, he no. didn't take – the yeah. next step we would have hoped for. Yeah. But I love the coaches and I love the rosters of those four teams. You know, you know, you know what's really interesting, and you and I agree on this. You don't have Green Bay in your eight. You don't have Green Bay in it. No. And I, I feel the exact same way. I honestly believe, like, Aaron, regardless of what you think, he doesn't trust a second receiver or a second tight end in a weapons league. He does not try. I watched the Niners game at home. He wouldn't let go of the seed, right? Like so, in the end, I think Green Bay's window is closed. I on it, so you must feel the same way. I agree. I, I absolutely agree. And listen, on the Aaron Rodgers thing, uh, I I I, re I thought your open on Monday after the Super Bowl, the Stafford Rodgers yeah. stuff was brilliant. I thought it was really well done, and I think it, you make some strong points. And I, you know, you know how much it pains me to say. That. I know that. Yeah. I do think Green Bay. Prop, if they keep Rodgers, I do think they'll win the division because I don't, you know, what are the Vikings going to do? What are the Lions going to do? I don't, the, the Bears with a new coach, we'll see what Justin Fields is. But so what that they win that division? I think there are certain moments, certain games that are truly devastating for how you view a player. And I was, I mean, taken aback to say the least. Yeah. By Aaron's performance in that play. Yes. And it, to me, it has put him in a spot where the regular season accolades are almost a negative. It's almost a negative that he has all these MVPs and this touchdown interception ratio, and he has, you know, a, a decent list of these playoff moments. So I just can't trust him. Yep. And so that, and that's got, you know, that's got nothing to do with his vaccination status. It might have something to do with his fashion choices. <laughs> I have a hard time trusting anyone that wears a corduroy suit. Like if we're being honest, I'm like, okay, you're, you you make some poor decisions, but it's mostly on the field. I thought that playoff game, even after the blocked punt, Colin, it's a tie game. All you got to do is throw it to Alan Lazard over the middle. You escape, you kick in a field goal. You're at home to go to the Super Bowl. And he didn't do it. So, yep. yeah, I, I don't have them on that list. Nope, totally agree. Uh, Nick Wright, excellent performance today. We got football. We got basketball, my yeah. friend. And uh, it's great seeing you. Great seeing you. Yeah. All right, buddy. Yep. We'll hit hockey next time, I promise. <laughs> See you, buddy. Uh, no, I, I think he, he makes a point. There are losses that stick with you. And I watch Stafford's fourth quarter this year, and I watch Aaron 
Going forward, I trust Stafford more than Aaron, and it ain't close. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.